The canonical position of anthropology is that over 1,500 human societies have existed, but not one has been a matriarchy. As Gerda Lerner put it in her book, The Creation of Patriarchy, defining matriarchy as the mirror image of patriarchy, I would conclude that no matriarchal society has ever existed. This is because patriarchy is fundamentally matricentric, ultimately focused on women as a proxy for children. But radical feminist ideology harnesses mankind's evolved matricentric tendencies while removing children as the ultimate focus. It aims at creating instead a gynocracy, a political supremacy of women. This gynocracy is the real matriarchy that has been a major canon of Marxist thought since its beginnings. Paradoxically, it is misogynistic because it is an assault on femininity. As Richard de Gutko wryly comments, now a non-feminist woman is not a woman at all, just as a non-communist worker was not really a proletarian. It doesn't count non-feminist women as women because it aims at destroying the family as the natural fulfillment of the complementarity of the sexes. But as George Gilder explained, the crucial process of civilization is the subordination of male sexual impulses and psychology to long-term horizons of female biology. To the extent that patriarchy is culturally shaped, as well as being rooted in biology, it involves dignifying the male provider role, in particular, to encourage men to support women in raising children. Devaluing motherhood thus discourages women from fulfilling their crucial role of domesticating and civilizing men. Disempowering women and threatening not just civilized male identity, but civilization itself. Mankind seems to have developed an understanding and appreciation of womanhood first and manhood later. The abstract symbolic representations of womanhood from 30,000 years ago, known as the Venus figurines, humanity's earliest works of art, produced very shortly after all our ancestors on all continents possessed language, predate any male equivalents. Men were probably at first merely considered as not women. Theories that these figures are proof of ancient matriarchies have been discredited, but they do show the matricentric basis of patriarchy and symbolize the nurturant female. Just as in no society has the protector role been mainly female, in no society has the role of caring for small infants been mainly male. The nurturant female is the counterpart and complement to the protective male. As Margaret Mead said, women may be said to be mothers unless they are taught to deny their child-bearing qualities. Society must distort their sense of themselves, pervert their inherent growth patterns, perpetuate a series of learning outrages on them. That series of learning outrages has been perpetuated on women for the best part of a century now distorting their sense of themselves and civilized male identity along with it. The existence of natural, real differences between the sexes has even been outright denied and cast as a right-wing conspiracy. If everything is socially constructed, then everything can be socially deconstructed. But women cannot be redesigned from scratch, and only the mother is necessarily present at birth. So the mother-child dyad, the primary social relationship, has shaped humanity from its origins and always will. Animals eat and breathe in order to reproduce. Women who prioritize their careers during their most fertile years and later can't have children often express regret. But animals have limited resources, time and energy to expend on reproduction. And females invest more in each offspring than do males. Because large ova 
bias organisms towards female nurture wherever fertilization takes place inside one parent's body. Pregnancy involving internal fertilization, internal gestation, and placental nurture is an enormous commitment of a female's resources, but it pays off massively in reduced offspring mortality. There is a trade-off between fecundity and nurture. Some cod can release 5 million eggs for external fertilization in one season. Many will be failures. Most fish and amphibia have external fertilization. There is often no post-mating parental care. When there is, it is as likely to be performed by males as by females. And although internal fertilization is universal in birds, the embryo is externalized early. Both parents can therefore care for it, so biparental investment is the rule. But in most species with internal fertilization, especially mammals, parental investment is female dominated. Even at birth, the mammalian female doesn't take a break. Milk is another major maternal investment. So women are more limited by physiology than men are. About 20 pregnancies is the lifetime limit for a woman. The Sharifian emperor of Morocco, Moulay Ismail the Bloodthirsty, had 888 children. Since the female's greater parental investment is a scarce resource, males compete for it, fighting and dying for the chance to inseminate females. According to Simmons in The Evolution of Human Sexuality, everywhere sex is something that females have that males want. Female prostitution is ubiquitous. Its converse is extremely rare.